Hello everybody on Facebook and in YouTube. I want to make a quick video. Um, for those who just want to kind of get an update on the basement, I'm going to give you the 30 second lowdown. It took me two weeks and using a very special cable called an AES 50 cable, I was finally able to basically get this mixer up here, which is called an X32 rack, to act as a stage box to the X32 producer over here while not sacrificing any local channels from each mixer, but still being able to route the outputs from the producer back to the X32 rack on that same it's called a Cat6 shielded uh, Ethercon or uh, yeah, it's an Ethercon cable. Um, and basically, what's going to happen is the big console, this guy here, this little this rack here that I've had forever, is going to be beside my desk in the office. This guy, the reason I'm using this as a stage box, which for a stage box basically means just being able to connect all the inputs remotely and send them over one cable to this mixer. The reason is this is gonna be in the server rack. So that is basically actually would be about 45 seconds. That's basically what I've been working on so that this mixer can talk to this mixer remotely and have all the in and out that I could want. I'm making this video though to help those other tech nerds who have constantly struggle because I swear earlier today I was like, I'm just gonna buy um, an actual dedicated S16 rack thing. So now this is the part of the video gets really, really technical. And I'm going to walk you through how I got this all to work in my configuration and use case. This may not work for you, but it's basically what I wanted. So here we go. Okay. So a lot of YouTube videos tell you actually how to make one of these a master and one of these a slave. I'm going to quickly go over that real quick here. Um, but essentially I'm using an AS50A um, I guess I can go around real quick to show you. Um, that's Right now I'm just using a dumb Ethernet cable, but I do have an Ethercon cable, but it's the same thing. Um, so that is actually going from there, talking to this mixer over there on its ASA port as well. But you can see I have nothing plugged in as far as XLR connections to excuse me, that mixer. I only right now I'm using one microphone in on the X32 rack, and I do have my output seven and eight uh, stereo TRSs into just a Line 6 guitar amp that I had lying around, just to test it and make sure the outputs were actually functioning and the master fader was doing what I wanted it to do. All right, here we go. So now that we got the hardwired connections taken care of, the first thing I'm gonna do, or that you should do if you haven't already, is go to your what you want to be your master console, okay? Because only one thing can be a master, and I'll show you how to tell if they're actually connected here. So go to setup. Now this is on the version 4.0 and plus. A lot of the tutorials show it on like version two. So this is gonna look a little bit different. And actually each one of these menus from the X32 producer and the X32 rack do have slight differences in, in their functionality just because of their capabilities. But what you want to focus on is this middle section here, which is the sample rate. I like mine at 48, um, uh, 48 kilohertz. I think it sounds, it's, it's marginal, but I do think it sounds better. 44.1 is like a default, it's probably what it's going to come with. But I set the source clock, the clock source to internal, super important. And uh, in case you have trouble navigating this, the second encoder down here is what actually goes between these two uh, right there. So sometimes people get confused as to like, uh, which encoder do I use to control this? And no, the date and time is not right. I know that and I'll fix it eventually. The second thing you need to do is, um, I'm gonna do this over on preamps just to make sure I haven't accidentally done it. Um, I, I told it to lock stage box it basically prevents you from adjusting the gains on here. Um, it, it will lock you out so you can't accidentally go in here to your um, gain settings and, and mess with those. Um, these are all going to be routed, and I'll show you that here in a, section, a second to show you how I'm doing that. All right, so, but also you can see over here, you can see a picture of the X32 uh, pervert, the producer, okay. Uh, 
because that's the device that's connected there right now on AES 50A, even though I know I, it'll make sense here in a second. Just trust me. Okay. So we don't need to do anything else here. What we need to do is because these two devices can operate as independent mixers. So we need to tell this one, no, nah, we need to dummy down, take directions from somebody else. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here onto your slave, which in my case, X32 rack. You can also do this with another producer. You can do it with X32 console. It really does not matter. Um, the setup is all going to be the same. So you're going to click setup. This one, you need to make sure your sample rate is the same at 48 kilohertz. And then your clock source, we want to tell it to get it from AES50A. So it'll talk to this one. So once that's done, again, that second encoder, next thing you're going to do is you're going to come over and, hey, select a device. You have an X32 rack. I know it sounds backwards, um, but what you need to focus on is this bottom right section here called the HA remote. This allows you to manipulate the preamps with the gain on here from here remotely. And it also lets you control the 48 volt phantom power, I found out. So um, just know that. So if your channel needs 48 volt phantom, you do not have to go back to your slave to turn on that. You can do it remotely from your master console. Okay, so now that that's all done, okay, they should be talking to each other. The way you'll know they're talking to each other is you look up here at the top, it says A, and my case it says X32P for producer, and then down here, I go to X32RCK for rack. Apologize for the focus here. All right, I'm going to try and make some of this fairly quick, because we're at six minutes, and I try to keep these videos less than ten. So, let's go. All right. So the first thing is I need to send out the inputs from here to be received and controlled here. Here's how we do that. We're going to come up here on the left hand side and we're going to click routing. Now this is my configuration. This may or may not make sense to you, but this made sense to me. So we have AS50A 1 through 8 is what it's actually receiving from here because this you can send 48 channels of audio up and down. So it made sense to me just because, hey, I want channels, you know, one through eight to be one through eight because that's the way I'm mixing it over here and you'll see why. Um, and then channels 17 through 32 are local one through eight, meaning the actual physical inputs over here um, are actually what you can mix over there. And then I actually wanted it to send, um, card one and two in my aux. So this is the local USB cable. Um, so this way I can at least get two channels of audio back into here on my aux auxiliary channels. Okay, so that's what I'm receiving from, or using from this console to this console. Now let's get to what we're gonna send out from this console to the producer. So we tap over, hit your arrow, to go to your AES50A. So I'm sending out on my AES outputs, local one through eight and local nine through 16 first. And then I'm sending out my cards one through eight, cards nine through 16, then my P16 channels, and then my P16 nine through 16 channels. That's what I'm sending out. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. From here over to here. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to routing and I'm gonna go over here to my home input. So you can see here I'm taking my local 1 through 16 first, which eventually is gonna be all the, mostly the microphones and an analog snake that I've got. But then you see 17 through 32 are AES 1 through 8 and 1 through 6 or 9 through 16. So I am receiving those channels on my local inputs 17 through 32. So if I come down here, you can see 17 through 32. So physical input one of this ultimately gets routed to, well, physical input, not physical, but the fader input 17 over here. I hope that makes sense. Just 
watch this video several times if it doesn't because it's that's the best way I can explain it and how this actually happens um, and it does work um, with a little twist and I'll explain that here in a second and we just crossed 10 minutes okay okay so um, I haven't done anything with the card on this side um, I haven't felt needed to but now I want to show you what we're gonna send out our AES 50A um, ports from here back to the rack so the first one, remember, you get 48 channels. So a lot of tutorials say, oh, make your outputs one through eight your first section. I don't like that. I want to send my locals one through eight and nine through 16 back here so it makes sense when I'm mixing it here so I don't get confused. But then you'll see I'm also sending my card one through eight from here and I'm gonna send that back output to um, and then you can see here my output, which says 1 through 8. I'm actually using channels 25 through 32, um, as I don't need to send any more channels back to the mixer other than my 16 plus a card plus my output. But I also need to send back on my last two from um, 33 through 48 my P16 because my personal monitor system is going to be on there. So when I go over to my rack and I want to use my alternate, then basically what I do is I have to come over to my P16, so tab all the way over, and this is where I can actually route those 16 channels that I'm sending back to it, out my P16, because I'm going to use the rack as my alternate distribution device. And I haven't got that part configured, but just know that you can. But for the purposes of this, the, how you get your outputs to your physical XLR outputs, including your main front of house left and right, this is a little tricky. So if you recall, on my AS50 outs, my actual 48 channels, I am using channels 25 through 32 for my outputs 1 through 8. To make that work over here, I kind of passed it, but on your XLR outputs, you can see I selected 25 through 32 for my output 1 through 8 on 25 through 32. Therefore, instead of output 7 and 8 on the producer, which also still works, by the way, you should be able to mirror both of them. But you can take your 7 and 8 here, and in my case, they're just a joint into a TRS connection into my guitar amp. And, I um, hope this will make sense, I'm going to talk in the microphone. Mic check, 1, 2. Mic check, 1, 2. And I'm holding it right next to the speaker, uh, and you can hear that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower the master fader, which should be front of house on those two. Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. You can hear that it's no longer coming out. Now, here's the twist I was talking about. It still thinks it's sending out because the master fader is still up on your X32 rack. You can ignore that because it's not patching to its physical 7 and 8. It's physically routing the AES to its physical 7 and 8. Therefore, it's kind of mute. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it does work. And it does include your mix buses as well. I actually was trying to play around with the echo a little bit. Um, let me see if I can show you that. Um, yeah. So, mic check. One, two. Mic check. Oh yeah, I muted it. Ha ha ha. Sorry, I should probably show you guys. Mic check. One, two. That mix bus 13 is a reverb, if you can't tell. And you can see that it's sending out. I'm using my sends on fader, but it does work that way. So you do have full control, including mix buses out, that you can send to your physical outputs. It works just the same as your front of house. Enough of that. And enough of the speaker. 
So I hope that helps. That is how I got to, um, that is basically how I got this to act as a, technically a true stage box. Um, and I hope that helps someone. We're just at 15 minutes, so that's kind of my cutoff. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. More to come on the basement uh, in the days ahead. Take care.